I'm very happy to be with you today. Can I have a timer, please? Because otherwise I want to speak nonstop by the end of the day, and I'm not sure you want to listen to me all the time, right? Timer? No? No? You know it? No. Great. Um, I want to share with you today a question. Can a non-digital native company become digital? Yes, and it has to, otherwise the company will literally die. Actually, almost all the industries are facing the digital revolution and are massively disrupted. Travel, retail, banking, insurance, media, telecommunication. All of them have to reinvent themselves to stay in the race. On top of that, the boundaries between what is digital and not digital are getting more and more blurry. Traditional brick-and-mortar companies are trying to get more digital. The French retail company Monoprix just acquired the uh, shoe retailer platform Sarenza. Nike just bought the data analytics company Zodiac. And at the same time, the pure players are trying to invest massively in brick-and-mortar assets. Amazon with Whole Foods, Google with Walmart, and they are opening physical stores. The hospitality industry is a good example of this digital trend. Aco Hotel has just celebrated last November its 50th anniversary. It belongs to a very traditional brick and mortar industry. And at the same time, it's also embodying a striking paradox. You will always need to experience your stay, to enjoy the beauty of the lobby, to taste the flavor of your breakfast and your scrambled eggs. Yet, the hospitality industry is probably one of the most disrupted businesses in the world, facing not one, but two battlefields. One battlefield, the traditional one, with all our well-known competitors, but also the digital battlefield, with new competitors, pure players, collaborative platform, sharing economy actors, and they are setting up a very aggressive competition. So what should we do? And the question would whether be, how can a non-digital company become digital, because obviously it has to become digital and become digital fast. In Aco Hotel, the digitalization process started quite early in 2014 with the launch of the digital plan. The idea was to digitalize the customer experience, but also to reinforce the IT infrastructure, considering the exponential growth of the IT solicitation looking at the hospitality market becoming more and more online. Just to give you an idea, before, between 2007 and 2017, the ratio of looks to books, i.e. the number of IT requests needed to finalize a booking, evolved from an average of 20 to over 1,000 just to finalize one booking. Already 40% of the transactions are done online. People will get, leave, get social more and more online. And they will indeed, Lorraine, use more and more their device mobile for their daily activities. For the past four years, under Sebastian Bazin's uh, leadership, digitalization process has also meant in Accor diversification. Digitalization has moved us towards what we call augmented hospitality. Three through, through three layers. The first one is our core business, enriching the business of hospitality by acquiring new brands from 12 until 26 with a unique portfolio starting from rather mid-scale eco brands to now luxury brands and new recent acquisitions you saw like Moven Peak, Mantra, Mantis, and trust me, it's not going to stop. Second layer is about techie acquisition. Because digitization process equals being able to leverage our digital capabilities. 
So this is relevant with the acquisition of fast booking, Avel Pro, Geeko, because digitalization is not only about consolidation, it's also about making sure we are techy enough. Last but not least, digitalization at Aco Hotel, back to the augmented hospitality ambition, is about delivering for the customers an enriched offer around a more global travel experience. Now you don't go to Accor just to have a stay in a hotel. You can enjoy F&B experience, Hotel Chabot, Res Diary. You can enjoy, enjoy co-working session next door. You can enjoy event concerts through the acquisition of the Accor Hotel Arena. And maybe sometime in the future, you will enjoy uh, travel on a train on the mythical Orient Express. So, diver uh, digitalization equals diversification, but not only. What are the future challenges for Aco Hotel in 2018? I would summarize my digital ambition called impact around five keywords. The first one is simplicity. Simplicity in all our services, tools, and experiences for the customers. Being a digital leader requests from us to be more simple, and this simplicity relies on two things, clarity and fluidity. If we take fluidity, it means fewer clicks, increasing our speed index, reducing downloading times. Clarity is about revamping our pricing architecture with fewer rates, to make sure that our customers fully understand what they buy online. And the mix of fluidity and clarity leads us to a more simple experience online. We need to create for the customers, thanks to a true UX culture, an easier way to book online. And simplicity actually is not the e easiest stuff to reach, right? Back to the famous quote of Leonardo da Vinci, Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. If you go one step further beyond simplicity, you have usage. Why usage? To me, usage is at the heart of our digital strategy. Usage, i.e., the capacity to meet, to really satisfy an unmet need of customers by creating a new service. Look at so many digital success stories. They all have one common point. They all met a need which, were not, which was not satisfied. They created a service which was convenient, useful, smart, easy to use. When I was working for the French government, I remember very well the conflict on Uber. I remember I had one key lesson. Uber, at that moment, was at some, po at some point illegal, especially with Uber Pop. But you know what? No matter what it was illegal with Uber Pop, people, consumers, kept on using it. And why did they keep on using it? Because usage was even stronger than law. So yes, digitalization is about the usage. And in Aqua Hotel, our digital transformation relies on usage. How? We have been setting up the usage dogma through two KPIs. We are screening all our services, all the solutions we want to provide to the field through two KPIs. Is it used? Is it popular? If it's not, let's stop. Usage dogma is also about setting up new ways of working. We are systematically co-designing our solution, listening to the field, testing through A-B test, collecting real-time feedbacks from his users to make sure that we really meet the expectation instead of having the impression to impose the right solution. On top of that, usage is not the same everywhere in the world. Let's take the example of China. In China, over three seconds of speed index, you lose the people online. Email is used, but not as much as a WeChat ID. You have to also adapt your solution to new, new payment solutions. 
WeChat Pay, HPay, Alipay, Union Pay. We have to understand the behaviors of our customers to make sure we are really ready to welcome the Chinese travelers in China, but also in our 4,300 hotels. The third key word on strategy about digitalization after simplicity and usage is about speed. And you're not going to be surprised about it, right? Speed meaning anticipate and accelerate. Anticipate because we need to keep on being connected to the trend of the market. What's going, what's going to come next, right? This is also why at Accor Hotel we are working a lot with startups, uh, strategic players, also GAFA. We are creating partnerships. You must have seen that we have launched a partnership with Waze recently. We want to feel what's going to happen next tomorrow. A recent Gartner survey proved that by 2020, 75% of the American households are going to be equipped with a vocal assistant, you know? This has to be anticipated. We in Aqua Hotel are now currently developing a baby bot uh, through machine learning. Of course, it's still a baby bot, uh, but it has to become the future personal assistant of tomorrow for our guests. Because anticipation is not just about saying, mm, we need to develop a board able to answer. We need to develop a board which, accordingly, accordingly to the data we would have collected on our people, would be able to proactively push our offers. So yes, digitalization is about anticipation, but also about acceleration. Digitalization for a non-digital native company is a matter of freedom. You have to go faster and faster. Not rushing your decision, but trust me, you have to go faster. Disruptors of tomorrow may be the disrupted of... No, disruptors of today may be the disrupted of tomorrow. So you need to be able to anticipate and to accelerate your capacity to design and to deliver. The fourth key word for me is a strong conviction also. It's personalization. I believe that personalization is going to be one of the key levers of differentiation for tomorrow. When I meet my loyalty members, the thing they tell me they love the most is to feel known and recognized in the hotels. Therefore, in 2018, in our hotel, we have been launching a tool allowing our hotels to share all our customers' preferences, to tell or make, to make sure we personalize at maximum their stay in the hotel. It's also about our capacity through data to better target the people we are talking to with a better and more relevant CRM strategy. It's also about loyalty. We are currently, accordingly to the augmented hospitality ambition, revamping our loyalty. Loyalty expectations have changed. People don't want to wait anymore. They want instant gratification. And people are not exclusive in loyalty programs. They are often belonging to several programs that can benchmark. So I want to enrich our loyalty offer to make sure we create habits and stickiness through an enriched experience at Aqua. Last but not least on personalization, I really think that a relevant personalization has to be responsible. I don't see the GDPR coming into force in uh, less than 10 days as a constraint, but as an opportunity. I really think that our consumers will choose the companies which will respect their privacy and their data. To finish, I would like to tell you about culture. A digitalization process and strategy is for sure a techy ambition, a technological journey, but it's also a long-term cultural change. I have the mission, and we collectively, all together at Accor, we want to get into a constant learning company. By setting up a new governance, a new organization, new ways of working, MVP, sprints, feature team, shortening the decision-making processes, getting agile, not just in word, in action, setting up the right to fail, the right to stop. This cultural ambition is a no-brainer. We need to be able to welcome matrix functions 
as mine, and to all become change agent. I call it T. T like breaking the silo, T like transversality, T like a bag of tea, because I need to infuse, I need to spread, I need this digital ambition to get everyone's challenge in the company. So yes, a non-digital native like Aco Hotel Company can become digital. It has to become digital. It is actually a school of humility. It's hard, it's demanding, it's sometimes exhausting. It has to rely on a solid cultural transformation too, but it's also a fantastic journey. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great talk. So let's delve into this a little bit. Okay. So first of all, you really you changed industries when you joined a core over a year ago. So right, you switched and went into the hospitality market. So what did, attracted you about a core? <laughs> and then what, when you finally got there, said, this has got to change? Wow. Um, I used to run a station, Gare Montparnasse. I don't know if you know the station in Paris. And you know, it's not because I'm a big fan of Monopoly, but hotels are a bit like stations. It's at the service of people in the field. You never get bored. It's a very evolving environment. It's very operational, and at the same time, the ambition of transformation is huge. And on top of that, Sébastien Bazin really wanted to make a difference and created uh, this new augmented hospitality concept. So I said, let's go for it. And what I would like to change is the fact that I think um, we still lack some women at key level position in the hospitality industry. No offense. Were you surprised I mean, when you came into the hospitality market? And a, bit, a bit, actually, because there weren't enough women. I've been and impressed by so many talents, so much mm -hmm. energy, so much enthusiasm. But I must say that we really need to keep on pushing parity and diversity and gender equality. Sebastian is highly committed to this because we are part of the E4C program with the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And I am personally the ambassador of the Men and Women Network mm -hmm. Who has the, which has the mission to really promote this diversity. Because actually, you know, I think beyond parity, it's about diversity as a lever of collective performance for our teams. So yes, we can still get better. So you found that there was something cultural that needed to be changed. What, what else besides diversity, culturally, did you feel needed to be changed? Not that much. I mean, because when you look at the culture of the hospitality industry, what I like is really the richness. I can't tell you there is one culture. I'm trying to define a strategy which will work for 100 countries and many, many different digital situations mm -hmm. and many, many different people with different legacies and histories. And I like this kind of very rich culture, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't want to change it. Okay, good. So things are all going to stay great at core. And Tell me, what is a chief digital officer? And is that a title you came up with, or Sebastian, or how? Uh, I've been offered the title, okay. so uh, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think that the title is really um, depending on the, the organization of the company. You know, it can cover really different uh, departments. In my case, at Aco Hotel, I'm in charge of IT, data, customer experience, sales and distribution, innovation, digital products. So it's a quite wide scope. And it's I am, actually, my role is to be an enabler. You must have seen that we are now in an asset light mo uh, mode. And uh, now we have switched to this asset light environment. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've got two clients, the guests in the hotel, but also the hotels, i.e. the partners, the GMs, the owners. And I have to develop for both of them the best experiences and the best tools to run the business. Mm -hmm. And you told me earlier, even for the GMs, there weren't a lot of women, that that also needed some more diversity. Yeah, I would love to have more and more uh, women uh, GM, but um, we're going to make it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to push for it, and Sebastian is pushing too. Okay. So, Accor is what, 50 years old, the brand, the, the hotel company. 
and you say you come in as a change agent. You say, you know, culturally, there were just a few things that needed some tweaking, but come on, I don't believe it all. I mean, it had to be an uphill climb when you talk about IT, when you talk about innovation, just in a hospitality company that's so kind of entrenched in, in tradition and in the fragmented space of hospitality. Well, I mean, it was not, I mean, you mean about the difficulty to make those things yeah. change? Yeah. Actually, I mean, people had made the things easier for me before I arrived. I must be honest, okay? Sebastian has arrived in 2014. Okay. So he led the way. I mean, yes. With change. I, I've been helped. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. sure, I have to keep on pushing this mm -hmm. change. And honestly, a cultural change um, combined with this digital and technological change will take what? Three, five, minimum seven years. If you want to change the culture, if you want to get to matriciality, if you want to get people fully aware of what it means to become agile or service provider. And I'm fine with that. It's not going to happen overnight. No. Yeah, you know that. That's good. That's good for you. You're in there for the long haul. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, you've said this, and, and I know you mentioned humility in your talk. And I, you've mentioned this. I think it, w it might have been at ITB, but it's one of your sessions. Working in digital is a constant humility lesson. <laughs> I, yeah. Explain that. Um, it's back to the idea of the right to fail and usage dogma. Sometimes you think you are developing a very relevant solution, but you have to check whether the solution is really expected or not. Mm -hmm. You have to check whether it is used or not. And sometimes it's not. So it's humility because it takes time. It, it can go back and forth. It's not, you know, like happening like this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm going to do some improvements and sometimes I'm going to see that finally I'm not here yet. So it needs patience. And at the same time, paradox paradoxically, I need to go fast. Mm -hmm. And yes, you never really arrived because you have no idea about what's going to be the next disruption. So yes, it's humility because also you need the others. A CDO in its very matrix function can't do anything alone. So I need to rely on strong teams. I need to have some power. But I also need the support of the regions, the operational mm -hmm. functions, who would understand the ambition. Because actually, this is a collective ambition mm -hmm. to become digital. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I want to talk a little bit more about the core strategy. Because when you came in, before you came in, there was this strategy right, called Marketplace. Mm -hmm of a core kind of branching out and saying, well, I want to represent independent hotels, kind of uh, bring them in along with our branded hotels. And, you know, there's a lot of industry chatter. Does a core want to become an OTA? Is it a core a tech company? What is a core? And when, I guess when you came in or maybe prior, the decision was to dismantle that strategy. Yeah. Yes. You, why, why was that? And I'm fine with that. <laughs> you know, many people say, hey, by the way, Marketplace, you decided to, to kill it. Is it sounded cool. It's yeah, is it, a, is it a bad sign? Oh. The answer is no, and I think it's even a good sign because it means we are agile, mm -hmm. at least. Because, you know, in 2016, when Aco Hotel decided to launch the Marketplace, the landscape of Aco Hotel was absolutely not the same. Meanwhile, we have been acquiring many, many brands, hospitality brands, but not only, also broader acquisition. And we, all together at XCOM level with Sebastian, decided to stop the marketplace because we had to focus. We had to focus on the success of all those integrations. And, you know, I mean, it's also this kind of agility we are looking for to be able to say, we tried, at least we tried, we had this intuition, we tried, things have changed very rapidly mm -hmm. accordingly to the digital environment, mm -hmm. and we accept to say, let's stop, right to fail, right to stop, and let's move to something else. So was it because of you needed to put attention on a different strategy, or, or did you think it wasn't a great strategy, or do you think you might come back to it at some point? Honestly, doors are still open. I'm not saying we're not going to get back to it. I'm just saying that when you are evolving from a portfolio of 12 brands to over 26 brands, and you must have seen that we have been acquiring new brands recently, I need my people on data, sales, distribution, platform, e-commerce, digital product to be focused on the success of their integrations, to really maximize the potential of the synergies. And, you know, you never know in digital era. Back to humility, you never know. So, yes. Never say never. Yeah, never say never. Okay. 
GDPR, so you mentioned personalization as, as one of your, I don't know, would you have five or so strategies? And how is that going to be impacted by GP, GDPR? And can you talk a little bit about it? I mean, I guess it's, what, kind of eight days away? Yeah, but actually we have been already impact, impacted for over one year. Mm -hmm. uh, very concretely, uh, we have now a chief data protection officer with us. We have been co-designing all our solution with the legal teams. Mm -hmm. We are designing by privacy accordingly to the GDPR rules. Uh, we are organizing some educational session to explain that this is not just a legal point. Mm -hmm. It's a responsibility for all the people who at Aco Hotel are using or treating personal data. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I think it's a huge work of preparation. For instance, our tool, which will allow our hotels to share the preferences uh, between hotels on all our customers to maximize the personalization of their stay, has been conceived to be fully GDPR compliant. It's really demanding, to be honest, mm -hmm. but I really think, I mean what I said, I really think that in the coming years, People will also choose us because of the beauty of the hotel, of the quality of the service, no doubt about it, but also because they will know we respect their privacy and we protect their data. We don't sell the data at our hotel, we protect them, we hold the data. So, you know, I mean, it's really also a criteria for choosing an hotel. So it should pay off in the end, but, but right now, does it, is it a challenge to your personalization strategy? Will it be? I mean, I mean, I used to work on GDPR challenges when I was working for the French government, so I was already a bit prepared. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going in the right direction. I really think that the relevant personalization is a responsible one. So, you know, um, yes, it's demanding, but it's healthy for everyone because digitalization is also about regulation. Okay, I see we have a question here. Hello. Hi. Uh, Valentin, my squire. Uh, thank you so much for a very inspiring speech, Maud. It Thank was you. really great. Uh, I remember Sebastian talking about uh, Accor becoming digital like a couple of years ago at Focusrite, and it was also very great, very inspiring what you do at Accor Hotels, really. I'm Thank a big you. fan. Uh, but uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, elaborate a bit on personalization part, actually. Um, and you talked about providing some um, like enjoyment and great services for your customers. I wonder if uh, Accor Hotels thinks about going beyond accommodation and providing some services like in destination maybe, something like that. I don't know, in partnership with some suppliers and stuff, and, and stuff like that. So anything on, on this? I mean, actually, it's a very good point. And uh, it's quite uh, consistent with the augmented hospitality ambition. Core business is hospitality and will always remain hospitality. Mm. But for the past four years, uh, under well, Sebastian's vision, clearly the ambition is to enrich what it means to offer a personalized experience. And you know, I've been organizing some dinners with my loyalty members, and I ask them what they like in the loyalty program and when they're experiencing personalization. So they tell me being known and recognized, and they tell me being able to enjoy something different, not just the stay. So we have been acquiring already new businesses which are not directly linked with the core of hospitality business, right? So um, John Paul is a concierge service. It's more about the travel experience. Next door is about the co-working session. Food and beverage is to allow the guests who will not necessarily stay in the hotel, but maybe just eat and enjoy their dinner or lunch in the hotel. Aco Hotel Arena, the loyalty members, they love to get some points to enjoy a concert or a sport event. I'm not saying it because I used to run a station, but I love the idea to offer in the coming uh, weeks, months, or year, I don't know, uh, a journey on board on the mythical Orient Express and having dinner. And I think we can take it further. Maybe travel, maybe flying, I don't know. I have only one attention point. I need it to be a consistent customer experience. Mm -hmm. At one moment, you have to find the right balance between enriching the offer to create habits and obviously a stickiness, which will make us chosen. And at the same time, if you're creating too many offers, you start being confusing. So I need to keep this strong identity around the idea of 
I want you to feel welcome and unique mm -hmm. and able to enjoy many, 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 many different personalized services. So, I'm sorry, I think we're out of time with the session, but I'm, so I, I'm going to get the one last question in. Maud, if you weren't sitting here, the CDO of a core, what would you be doing? <laughs> uh, I would be a transformer. I don't know where, I don't know in which industry, but you know sometimes people ask me, what is the common point between all your professional experience? It doesn't make sense. You used to work for the French government, you run a station, you made some audit missions, you used to be the train director in charge of the controller evolution, and now, now you are in charge of digital at Accor. Why? And the common point is about people, operational solution and connection, and helping a company to transform itself. So I think, Lorraine, I don't know where exactly, but that will be a change agent. You're doing it right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Maud Thank Bailey. You.